Um, you are forgiven. Yes, yes. All right. um, but what I would, I would want to use your platform to reach out to are the contractors on the Akrati Mamoto Way expansion project. The contractors? Yes. What have they at done the to Manet, you? Manet Junction. Manet Junction. People cross in the mornings to the industrial side on the Spintis Road and it creates a terrible traffic. At the minimum, some temporal uh, pedestrian. Uh, ah, where do you live? You don't live at cantonments and some of those places? No, I mean, uh, you know that according to Chema Wuntimi, cantonment and uh, Laboni belongs to uh, the uh, oh, people in, in, in power. They have the capacity to live there. I live at Santo. Oh, um, just close to AKA East Legon Hills. Yes. You know, very close. So, you people say it's East Legon But Hills. ordinarily, it's about 40 minutes drive to this place. Ideally. I left the house at 6.20. You'll be late. 6.20. Be late. You, you know, so uh, uh, they Five should days. manage the project well, put a temporary pedestrian walkway there so that the people are not crossing the motorway, causing the kind of uh, traffic we, are, we have. But uh, good morning to um, my colleagues here, uh, Senior Eduji. Uh, we've known him all the way back from Legon days, you know. And then my good brother AC, the man with the interesting accent, you know. This year's election, it's not going to be business as usual. And I'm glad that there are research outputs that is already suggesting that. But this election also, the issues that will determine the election will not be any different from the issues that have determined all our previous elections. And that is about the standard of living of our people. Are people able to afford living in Ghana? I think basically that is what this is about. So I'm not surprised that Afrobarometer is saying that the economy, jobs, education, infrastructure in the form of roads, and the perennial issue of corruption, of corruption. But the good thing that makes this election different is that there is a difference now on the ballot. There's a difference on the ballot. As far as the economy is concerned, as far as jobs is concerned, there's one person whose name is always associated with jobs and creating jobs, and that's Alan Martin. And that is why he has put together what we call the Great Transformational Plan, a robust plan, not a list of manifesto promises but a robust plan as to how we are going to achieve this. So in our current state of affairs, where practically nothing, nothing, it's working. It looks like it is a, it, it is a sin to be a Ghanaian because we have a government that continues to pass out policies that punish the ordinary Ghanaian. How is it so? At the center of all of these problems is corruption mainly procured through sole source procurement. Like what Eduji was talking about. Absolutely, I agree with him. Sole sourcing has become like the default way of awarding contracts under this government. Well, the argument that sole sourcing is not wrong. When you have a situation mm -hmm. where, according to Professor Bobkin of Legon, as at April this year, 80% of all major contracts under this administration have been so sourced. Do you know the rationale for so sourcing? When there's a state of emergency or there's a specialized service. So we are being told that rice for our young children to eat in secondary school, sardine for our young people in secondary school, calculators. Supply of calculators to students, textbooks, all of these basic things that Ghanaians are involved in as businesses. Go to every district, there's somebody who deals in stationery. Go to every district, there are farmers who are farming whose produce can feed our children. But because of corruption incentive, we sit in Accra and award contract to individuals to import rice import sardine, import everything. And we are here talking about dollar. After spending 2.1 billion CDs on planting for food and jobs is one, we still cannot feed our children. We import expired rice and give to them. We import rice that's expired and give to them. 
And we sit here and we want to use benign language to make it look good. Oh, it could have been worse. That's what he says. My word. Could have been above 17. My word. Was that a promise in 2016? I was with him campaigning in 2016. I don't understand. The two of you were together? Of course. <laughs> I was in the MPP at the time. Of course. Okay. The that promise was not to move it from 4.2 to 16. What, was the, what was the promise? To stabilize it and re decrease it, reduce it. If possible. Yes. <laughs> that was a promise in 2016. The rate of depreciation is what you work on. That's a promise. And the rate is good. But you look at it right now, it's mm -hmm. over the roof. How can you tell me that the young Ghanaian no. whose salary in 2016 was equivalent to $2,000 is now about $650? Mm. The equivalent of a salary in CDs Say that again. was about 2,000 CDs, uh, uh, two, equivalent to $2,000. That person today, the equivalent of that same salary is about $600. Mm -hmm. And I tell me he's, he's better off. That she's better off. How do you make this argument? And it is that kind of insensitivity on the part of government and its communicators that I find worrying. The minimum you can do to Ghanaians is to appreciate the situation that they are in. But to deny a man his reality is the height of wickedness. Is a it's the height of wickedness. The person is suffering. And you say, no, no, you are not suffering. That you're fine. You don't even, you are not sensitive enough to even appreciate that. Oh, I understand that you are suffering. However, A, B, C, and D is what I'll do. And that is because truly they don't, truly they don't have the panacea. They don't have the solution. Why am I saying that? You mean Dr. Mahmoud Bami, head of economic management team, he doesn't have the solution? No, he doesn't. Okay. How, how does it sit with you, Roland? How does it sit with you? that you are in a country that is supposed to be a free market economy, right? Government decides that I need to give supply materials to young people, to students. We need to give food, we need to give everything. And instead of depending on the local economy for that supply, we pick one businessman at random for whatever connection, and we give everything to that person, collapsing local economies. One of the biggest sectors of our economy is the education supply sector. Education supply sector, check what's happened to the sector. Right from Vice President, uh, running mate, uh, Matthew Poku Prempe's time, every procurement that has got to do with education was centralized. Right from there. And that is how come this free SHS implementation has impoverished the average Ghanaian. I don't understand. How do you, you think that it was going nations. to? <laughs> when you implement a policy like this, fantastic policy, what it's supposed to do is to bring economic opportunities to local people. So the local economy, the local where the economy, schools are located. Where the schools are located. So they supply food. One person will supply detergents. Another person who runs a cleaning company so will be cleaning eggs. the uh, eggs, uh, poultry products. So if I'm a poultry farmer at Santro Coffee, and Santro Coffee has a secondary school, I get the opportunity to supply my poultry to the ready off the market. What they does is that it even reduces my transport cost and everything. I get to partake in the local economy. Under this administration, in the name of free SHS, everything is procured from Accra, including when, sardine. When you were in the MPP, X. did you know people who were benefiting from centralized procurement? I don't know any specific persons, but if you check the list of how business has been done, it is also. And you see, some of us were hated because we kept complaining about these things. You kept complaining? Yes, of course. We kept complaining. That, how come today, today, we have a government, and I'm ending on the governance side, that according to the Mo Ibrahim Index, Trust in the judiciary has reduced to 50 from 100. Record level, actually. Yes, from 100. And we are told that all oh, human rights law is a rule of law. What kind of rule of law will lead to mistrust in the judiciary? The last bastion of our democracy, where we all go to when the need arises. What kind of rule of law? You, you get it? What kind of rule of law? It's the same thing under governance. You, today, everybody who fought corruption has been fought by this administration. Everybody who fought 
corruption, corruption has been fought by this administration. The special prosecutor today, as we speak, the special prosecutor, is now in Kwanuma. He's been given the it's now Ankwanuma, and every time you he's talk, they saw he's been given resources. We've been giving resources who, who at the end of the day. Him from doing his work? <sighs> at the end who of the day, at the end of the day, hmm. you see what he happens when you have a system like this. When I was coming, my brother, I was trying to follow the discussions <laughs> online. I did everything. It kept buffering, buffering, buffering. Why? Because regulatory institutions are not working. Why are they not working? Corruption. Corruption. When was the last time your Mobile connectivity what, was strong. What about this corruption thing? When was it? So nothing seems to hold. And what disappoints me yeah, most is going. that when statesmen, people who should live above partisanship. Why are you going with this? No, I'm coming. <laughs> above partisanship are engaged. For them to speak in their national interest, they go to speak in the interest of parties. Who are you talking about? I'm, I think I, 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 Yesterday was one of the saddest days for me. Why? What's, what's happening? How can President Kufo look us in the face and tell us that the panacea to Ghana's problems is with Al-Hajj Baumia? That's his choice. How on earth? Oh, he doesn't have the right. You see, Professor Sassanti of Legon, <laughs> political science, told us that, you know, it's my opinion. It's mostly used as a defense for holding oh. positions that depart from expectation. But any time you prefer any opinion, you are duty bound to provide the basis for it. I did it. Is the president, former president telling us that the exchange rate is good? That the depreciation of the city is good? Is, is he telling us that our economy today is in the best of hands? Is he telling us that our education today is at the best of qualities? Is he telling us that as a country we are able to feed ourselves? Is he telling us? President, president John Lee Jokunku. Yes. He what, are, what has he done because to you? What because I know, he no, no, about what him. I know from him is that any time he spoke about governance, he spoke to indicators. If that same standard oh, is to be applied, the president has departed from his I don't know, You are saying President John Lee Kung Fu is playing ostrich. Of course. Can you imagine that? First seven, Charlie, the survey, first seven uh, issues, it doesn't include exchange rate. Corruption. Three minutes. Where do you think we're headed if we maintain the same team or unless we change? Massive. Upgrade. Because you've given us the solutions in the GTP. Where do you think we're headed if we maintain the same team or we have an alternative in Alan German thing? And I, 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 I like the way you post your question because... Because it's to you. Yes, and, and that's also because truly... Um, from the analysis thus far, there is very little difference between the MPP and the NDC. <laughs> There's very little. It's the, the same issues. 2016. The same issues we had is the same issues we have. If you check headlines, the same headlines we had in 2016 is the same headlines we are having. It is only the difference is in the little degree of the challenges. But the question I have is that, you see, when you talk about 71% of our GDP to debt ratio and all of that, the average Ghanaian may not appreciate it. It means that if you earn a thousand CDs, you spend 700, uh, 700 and, um, seven, yeah, 710 CDs to pay debt, and you're left with only 290 CDs. That is what it means. And that is the precarious state that Ghana is in. This governance where you borrow and buy, we call it tomatoes economy. Borrow and spend, borrow and spend. It's not the way out. And that is why neither the MPP nor the NDC holds the solution for this country. Because as it stands now, as it stands now, the only way we can borrow from the international market will be at cutthroat ex uh, interest rates. Yep. We are so unattractive that whilst other countries are borrowing at 1%, 3%, we will have to be borrowing at about 15%. In fact, Tokubo did 8% in 2023. No, please, please allow so, him to so, so, so when you have that situation, maintaining the status quo of the duopoly means that going, getting worse off. Alan Chamartin says a simple thing. We cannot continue to borrow. So what do we do? Let us depend on creating the policies that will let the private sector thrive. That is all. The private sector remains the engine of growth. And that is why he has always been able, with policy, to attract investment into the private sector in key areas wherever he has managed 
uh, uh, any aspects of the economy, whether under President Kufo or under President Kufuado. Alan has also said that so source procurement must be abolished from our laws, and he has committed himself to that. Not John Mahama or Al Haj Baumia has been able to commit themselves to that. Why? Because that is the only way they can maintain the kind of poor economics that they do. They can't. And if you are not changing fundamentally these things, there's no hope. And that is why our only hope rests in Alan Chematin, who has the capacity and says, so source and abolish it. When you abolish it, then you can take care of the chronism and this, this uh, family and friends situation. Because if it's competitive tendering, a company that has just been set up by the president's daughter or the president's niece or nephew cannot just be given a contract or awarded a contract. And that is where we are headed. But they, are they not they're so, please, no why, when, uh, you are, when you are chastising when President Mahama for giving a contract to, the, the um, what's the name? Ibrahim, Ibrahim Mahama. Was no, Ibrahim Mahama a stranger? But you have carried our ambulance supply system. You've yeah. carried so many things. So that one is that there's no difference. Brother. All right. But I was giving contracts. No, no. So my, my, in, in conclusion. I think the traffic has affected you. But in conclusion, my, my concluding remark is that. My concluding remark is that the most important criteria. The most important criteria to determine who to be the next president should be integrity. And as far as that one is concerned, take Alan Martin out. The rest are all the Niyama, Niyama says, Mr. say, you see, <laughs> when talking, <laughs> reminds me so much of uh, Dr. Mount Baumia and uh, Kufuado in 2016. Mm -hmm. Waxing lyrical with flowery words, <laughs> with straight face and bravado. <laughs> what does bravado mean? Uh, 